Hi, this is Henk Ackermans and this is Smart Asset Management Lecture 8, Section 1, Design Rules for Maintenance. A great start. So, this is the course on asset management, on maintenance, and it's obvious with these long lifetimes that our assets have, that there's a lot of focus on the time that uh, the asset is being used, and, well, during its lifetime. But actually, we already saw earlier on that that phase of the life cycle where there's the biggest impact on the whole life cycle is at the beginning, is at the design stage. Uh, we saw in lecture five this slide from Mariela Stulinga showing that both economically it's really smart to have a lot of attention to the initial uh, phases because the cost of change are so much lower there. Organizationally is a good idea because that's the phase when you have the most knowledge about the design uh, available and even technically because in that initial phase often you have teething problems uh, and the th more thorough you are in the initial stage the lower those will be um, so uh, but still that's a bit of a reactive approach to uh, design it's like how can we avoid mistakes uh, here we look at design for maintenance is really a proactive approach how can we make the design in such a way that it's really easy to maintain apart from the fact that things in the design itself may go wrong later on uh, now there um, there are not so many uh, publications that deal with that broad topic of the maintainability so uh, very well affected really nice report was written in 2012 by a Mulder block and cochlear and hoekstra of uh, of uh, 20 university uh, and uh, also in uh, commission by World Class Maintenance. You can still uh, find it uh, in PDF format on the Twente University website, and you can buy a paper version for against cost price from the World Class Maintenance website. But uh, all that left aside, the overall logic is that if you want to have cost-effective assets, then, uh, then there's a financial aspect to it. And there's a non-financial aspect to it, the maintainability, the reliability, and the supportability. And design has a big impact on all of those. We're not so much talking today then about the initial or the lifetime costs. We will uh, address a topic of reliability and uh, supportability to a lesser extent. But the real focus now is on maintainability. That's, that's the main interest uh, of, of this section. So we have maintainability, reliability, and supportability, and those are, uh, yeah, um, not uh, totally disconnected. Uh, they are a bit of overlapping terms. So maintainability has to do with how good you can do the maintenance, how quickly you can do it, um, uh, how um, yeah, how error-free you can do it. Uh, the reliability has nothing to do with the maintenance itself. In fact, perfect reliability would mean uh, zero uh, maintainability almost. If, if the product is red, it has to do with its failure rate and its probability of proper functioning. The supportability is somewhat halfway in between that has to do with if you have to do the maintenance, then you need people, uh, you need equipment, and you need spare parts. Now, to get those in the right place, that also is partly determined by the design. You can make a design in such a way that that's really easy or really cumbersome. In a really good technical organization, uh, the, uh, the, 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 these guidelines for how to uh, make a design really maintain it, well maintainable and reliable, by the way, comes from two sources. There is the existing engineering knowledge, there's good engineering practice, uh, it just says there is good programming practice and there are experiences from uh, the operation and the support and things that don't work in practice. This feedback loop is often broken and that's a shame. Uh, it takes often a long time before uh, experience in the field with a certain design are fed back to the designers who then all the time keep designing flaws in new products. So the better you get this feedback going, the better it is. That's not the topic of today though. The topic of the day is actually some really practical guidelines to enhance maintainability. So uh, there are 13 in total in the booklet. 
just more than half of them are really straightforward, really materials handling related, just as these. So stuff like put the main, put uh, the components that are regularly placed need uh, close together, uh, have enough space, uh, make uh, it easy to uh, have the maintenance points close to each other, easy accessibility, that stuff. And there's more conceptual stuff, which has to do with things like modularity, standardization, uh, make it foolproof, etc. And we'll have a look at, uh, at at all of them. And every time you'll see that all these examples are so obvious when you see them, especially because there are nice pictures made and they, they, the authors use real, uh, well, normal life examples. Um, but that doesn't mean that they're so easy and obvious to implement in the design. On the contrary. They say easy uh, reading is hard writing, and I suppose that's also true for the design. So take the first one. Yeah, uh, do not use materials that prolong maintenance activities, such as stuff that rusts quickly. Uh, or uh, here are some, uh, some uh, hex uh, screws, and often these things wear out, you know, and it's difficult if you have to screw them in and out for a couple of time, then, then, then after a while you can't use them anymore. So obvious, but we all have experience with these. Uh, use fasteners that uh, help to maintain uh, the, the, the maintenance. So in maintenance, you have to take stuff in and out, you have to fasten it and fasten it. And often that's a pain. And this example that, uh, that all of us that ever went on a skiing holiday know, that's a superior example of a, uh, a smart maintenance uh, uh, fastener. There is absolutely no tooling required. Well, perhaps your stick, I suppose, to uh, to uh, unfasten it and to fasten it. And and indeed, uh, these fasteners work in a pretty wide variety of settings, really good. So that's an example for many industrial settings. Um, the another example, also straightforward, is that the best, <laughs> the quickest maintenance, and we saw that earlier on, also in our section on performance measurement is often done by the operators of the equipment themselves. Well, they make the maintenance so easy that they can do it themselves. Uh, so for electronic equipment, there are often these, uh, these uh, informative LED screens that tell you what to do. Uh, but uh, many of us still replace the pipes uh, in their houses uh, when, uh, or at least uh, clean them uh, when uh, there is some problem with the plumbing. And there once was a day when uh, simple maintenance on your car, you could do yourself like replacing a battery. But still, that, 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 that maintenance, the design is such that the maintenance can be done by non-technical experts, even though it's a uh, technically advanced uh, piece of equipment. And that's great because then you don't need to get specialized personnel there. The people, the operators can do it themselves. Another very straightforward point, but so often missed, have enough space around the maintenance points. I've seen a few designs of ships where uh, under the staircase uh, the air conditioning was nicely put away, which is very convenient because you save space, but then you can't maintain it anymore. Uh, we also see some examples uh, from uh, rolling stock uh, where actually they just didn't think about that, that where to place something. So space between equipment, a maintenance platform so that you can reach uh, uh, an elevated plane high, uh, 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 on a high position, enough space to, to use your tools. It's so obvious and yet it can be pretty cumbersome in practice. So good design guideline. Uh, the components that you need to replace often, put them at an easy accessible place. Like the engine oil that you need, uh, or, or uh, if you have to replace a scooter wheel because it suffers a lot. And this is a rather outdated toner, but still the idea is obvious when you have to replace toners, which is a form of maintenance, then uh, put the, the, the toner uh, um, cartridges at a really easy to reach place. Talk about easy to reach places, put them all together. Put the whole meter cupboard together, put all the valves together, have the one place where the central heating uh, it, it comes together. Uh, these real world examples are so logical, we forgot about them, but in practice often you have to walk from one maintenance point to another, which is cumbersome. And you have to think during design about where to put in all these valves. When you uh, need to replace certain uh, components often, then make sure that they're easy to handle. Don't make them too heavy. Have a nice handle there. 
uh, have an easy filter to replace use standard size and weights no sharp edges more conceptual design guidelines well make it foolproof like uh, the SD card in your mobile phone uh, uh, that can only fit in in one way or there's only one way to screw in a light bulb or some uh, asymmetry which is often very convenient uh, well even in IKEA furniture you know that you know oh no I have to do this way because the other way just doesn't fit and and that's then quite helpful because sooner or later you will have it the wrong way around if it can go for in two ways so an unambiguous design uh, use standard components and not just because they're cheaper but everybody knows them and they know how to work them and they'll have the tools available like uh, some known screw heads or in a more advanced situation a certified standard electric motor why have all these uh, fancy uh, specialized things so that commonality of components is is uh, is good for many reasons also costing but also for maintenance a uh, deep uh, insight but really practical if you look at the tricycle is that make sure that the design is safe by the design itself it's impossible here to reach the actual wires in this plug and socket uh, combination you have to uh, do it safe or it doesn't work the tricycle as if you drive it you well it's very difficult to fall off and take this safety shield you have to first to screen uh, close the screen and then with two hands manipulate these buttons and only then when it's really sure from the design that you are in the right place in a safe place can you start uh, uh, working the machine so there we have the safety in the design itself even more general design modular so that it's easy to replace an entire uh, system so uh, this bogey here for instance that's an assembly which sits at the bottom of rolling stock uh, and you can uh, replace it in one go so you can uh, swap uh, and go uh, and, 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 and take your time to fix in some kind of repair shop this one while the rolling stock itself is moving of course the classical example a tire switching a tire but also solar panels are often really modular and you can take out one without the rest of them working and it's a standard size etc so that's often very desirable standard interfaces in general where would we be without them the power plug and socket if only the the, um, the batteries of mobile phones would reach this level of sophistication uh, usbs but we have so many different kinds of usb nowadays a tow bar is standardized because then you can put on any card behind it uh, but also this socket here uh, is pretty standardized although there are different versions there too so all these help this is also a very nice one if a si every system has a weakest link the, the 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 place where things will break soon well make uh, well uh, never waste a good crisis use that weakest link and make sure that that weak is is easily replaceable and cheap the ultimate example, of course, is a fuse. A fuse is designed to, uh, uh, to, to break when there is a too high current flowing uh, through an, uh, an uh, electri electrical cycle. But also the brake pads, which will, uh, uh, well, they will wear in use and they should be easy to replace and not expensive. So all these are examples, very simple, straightforward example of design rules for maintenance, which if they would be applied in all settings and not just in the everyday settings, of which the pictures uh, show us examples man would be save a lot of money trouble hazards etc